Okay, so I thought of a second attempt. I'm going to try, rather than using Scoop to install SDL2, I'm going to download it and manually place it exactly where I want it to be and configure it myself, similarly to how I did with um, W64 Dev Kit. So we're going to be switching to Display Capture here. And I'm going to, I'm on the SDL website. We're going to go to SDL releases and see there's different kinds. There, this one, this VC, that's for Visual C, that's for the Microsoft version. What I need is I need something that is the development files for MinGW. Now, these two, now, if you don't know what MinGW is, it means minimalist new for Windows, which in new means new software as in free software foundation, you know, free open source. That's what it means. I know all this weird stuff. Now, th this zip here is actually going to be the source code, but we're just looking for the development files. We're not looking to compile from source. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to download the latest release. I knew I would have everything the most up to date by just installing fresh rather than trying to copy over my old system. So we're gonna go, we're gonna save this to my downloads. We're gonna do SDL. We're just gonna save this in the, the downloads there. So <clears throat> here's what we're gonna do is, see I have the, I downloaded the W64 SDL make.bat. Now that that's cool and all, but let's let, okay. See if we open up a terminal here. Okay, so yeah. First of all, we're going to I'm going to copy. The wait. Why is that? Why is that a text file? Huh. Yeah, it's not supposed to be. Yeah, it's not supposed to be a text file. Somehow it got downloaded that way. Okay, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to have to fix that, remove the TXT extension. I think Notepad did that automatically. We're going to rename this. We're going to remove the TXT. Okay, that should fix it. So now let's try, let's just try running it. Okay, see. It's saying that GCC is not, right? that's because it changes the path. We're going to have to change the script. See, it, it doesn't work at all. It doesn't work at all because I don't have <coughs> W64 dev kit installed in this computer. So it would work if I did, but because I don't, um, it's not going to work the same way. So we're going to make a modified version of the script. We're going to do, okay, I'm going to rename this. We're going to rename this as scoop SDL make. Okay. Because instead of W64 dev kit, it's scoop. Um, so, and it's going to, it's, it's meant to make SDL programs. So that's what we're going to do. Is we're going to just make a separate script. This one is going to be very interesting. So, first of all, and I, I hate the, the way the menu has changed. I have to click more to get to the original here. Okay. <laughs> yeah, what the heck? I'm just trying to edit it. See, this is what I mean. Windows gets in your way. It tries to prevent you from running things, even when you know what you're doing. So I hate Windows, but I'm trying to learn the way to do my development on Windows because I want to learn, I want to overcome this challenge. Now, so here's what we're going to do. Now I have, um, okay, let, let me open up a new tab. Okay, I want to, okay, how do I open up a new, okay, we're going to open a new tab here. I'm going to go to my downloads. Wait a minute. Where's my where's my download? What the wait, what the heck? Okay, what what is happening here? 
Okay, where did my... Oh, wait a minute. It download... Okay. That was not supposed to... I da download it to the wrong place. Okay. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to... Um, okay. I, I need to... I need to cut this and then we're going to take it to the downloads because I meant to download it to my downloads in the first place. So let's, okay, so there it is. Here's where it was meant to be downloaded. So let me go back to the other window. Okay, because here is what we want to close that out. So we're going to extract, actually let's go to extract all. Let's extract all these files here and I'm going to show you the manual way of doing this because I already have GCC installed. But what we're going to do is we're going to configure it to, we're going to have a special place we put the development files in, and then we're going to configure it to work with the GCC, the scoop installed. And let's see if this will work or not. So we're going to, okay, yeah, and there, see there's two different files here. There's two totally different um, files here. And actually, how do I know which is the right set of files? Well, there's actually a way. Yeah, there, there's, there's some weird stuff. Okay, yeah, this is what, okay, let, let me go to, um, Okay, so let's 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 go to home and let's see where is scoop. See, I I hate the way like it hides. I'm trying to go to my home directory. So I but I always have to manually go back to it. It's not like it is in Linux. So, let's go to scoop and let's look at the apps that are installed. GCC. Now, GCC current Look at this, x86-64-w64 minjw32. Yeah, and then it has all this stuff. Has some exes, has some include. Yeah, so here's the include files. And then it has lib. Has a lot of interesting files here. That's actually pretty cool. That's very, very cool, in fact. But because we don't want to pollute the files that are already here, it's better to put the develop files. But that, that's simply a clue. So we're going to go to, since we, since we know that x86 underscore 64, yeah, okay. So rat, we don't want i686. We want this one. This is where it's going to get interesting. So, okay, so we have lib, bin. Yeah, we have we have all kinds of interesting things there. So let's see here. Actually, let me check my path. Let me check something about the path here, because scoop is. Sh scoop shims. Let's see. Scoop apps GCC current bin. Okay. Interesting. That's very interesting how this is done here. Because. Okay. GCC current bin. Okay. I think I know what I need to do. Because I I don't want to have to reset paths. I want it to be able to use the existing paths. So what we're going to do here, even though this may not be the best idea, I'm going to try it and see if it works. That's what I'm going to try to do. We're going to Okay, because here is where we have, see the bin, 
Yeah, so bin include lib, because this is where GCC is. So we have bin include lib, okay. So here we, we already have bin, we have include, we have lib, okay. So this is basically the, the folder where we're going to need to copy some things. So here you see, this is the development files here. We have, and what's share? AC local, SDL2, M4. I don't know if we actually need that. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. We're going to copy lib, bin, and include. We're going to copy these into, yeah, we're gonna copy these and we're going to place them in the same folder as the current GCC. That's what we're gonna do. Okay, you see it copied the files and the way we can know is let's look in the include folder. There's SDL2, it's in there now. The, the header files for SDL2 are in there. And let's go and let's look at the lib. And here we have the lib SDL2 files there. That's cool, that's very cool. And let's just hope that this all works. I don't know if it's gonna work or not. I really honestly don't know if it's gonna work. But that's the fun, but see, and we have SDL2 Dot DLL and that DLL file is going to be important because it's going to need that. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. So let me close out this terminal and let's okay, let's close out a few things. I'm going, let's see, my previous video is processing, so let's close my web browser. And then, see, I had a I had a whole system here, but I don't know if I'm actually going to need all of that stuff. So let's go back to my scoop notes. I'm going to try this because I had had I had had scoop notes, and let's just try. I'm just going to attempt this, and if this fails, this could just be another learning experience. I am not afraid of failure. Hmm. SDL.h. No such file or directory. Hmm. That's interesting. I'm wondering, okay, I'm wondering if I need to modify something here. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not really very sure. I'm actually not sure. Um. Okay. Okay, I have an idea. We want to make sure that everything is in the correct spot. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to do a modified script. See, this is the hard part of doing C compiling as weird stuff happens. So, we're going to go back. We're going to Oh, we're going to open Wait, wait, wait. I need to Okay, I need to edit it. Let's okay, let's let's edit this script here. Let's change the path, okay? We're not going to set the path. We're going to leave the path as it is. 
we're going to remove those lines. But we're going to set the dev kit. We're going to set that as um, okay, because we have include yeah S S D L two yeah. So the dev kit root directory and the lib directory. So yep, let's let's change this. So let's go back. Okay, let me go back to let's okay, let me navigate back to the scoop directory and get the path. Apps GCC current. Okay. So this is yeah. Okay, so there, that there is the path. So we're going to set the dev kit, we're going to have it equal to that directory, the current GCC. That's what we're going to do. And then, now that I have this configured, let's see if it will work. Okay, so we're going to do. Okay, so scoop. SDL make what the heck it works it actually works the screen resolution is wrong but it works okay that's that's pretty freaky it actually works Oh my God, L uh, let me try that again. Yeah, okay. So I have a screen resolution problem, but it, it works. It actually works. Okay, so, so that's, what it, that's what it comes down to. That's what it actually comes down to. So let's see here, so it, All right, so let's see here. So first, it was setting the dev kit to that, to the current GCC installation. And then it was setting the path to include SDL2. Let's try SDL2 config. Yeah, let's, okay, let's try, let's wait, bash. Okay, SDL2 config. Wait, I, I, me I messed up. I typed it wrong. SDL2 config. Ah, there it is. There it is, people. Let's try something. Now, let's just see what happens. Make. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it works. Okay, I need to fix the screen resolution. Let's I'll figure that part out, but see when running under bash this command Wait. Okay. Yeah, that's wait. That was not what I expected. Echo. Wait, no, that's right. Okay, we need to be running under bash again. Okay. Okay, echo. Okay. Okay, echo that. Okay, so if we echo that, that has. Yeah, echo C user chan scoop apps GCC. I love it. Okay, D main. 
it works. Yeah, yeah, you have L min G W thirty two L S D L two main L S D L two M N window M windows. Yeah. That last uh flag M windows that means that it won't display the console, which I don't like that flag in fact. But the fact that I can now I can type make and have it work, that's actually incredible. But why is the screen resolution not what I, what I expect it to be? Okay, let's look at the screen resolution here. Okay, so I, I have, a, I have a, a working script. It sets, it sets the dev kit. But yeah, I have it manually installed, okay. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's, yeah, we're gonna save that. Cause that is the, that is the script. Okay. So it, it's just amazing that it works that well. It just totally works. Yeah, that's, that's actually really freaky. That's exceptionally freaky that it even works. Um, now let's try running main.exe. Hey, it works. It, it actually works on my machine. And that, that's because it's still, it's still in the path. The SDL2 is in the path on my machine. That's part of why it works as it does. So if I was distributing this file, I would have to include the SDL. Um, I would have, yeah, I would have to include the SDL.dll with it. But let's look at my display because I've never actually taken a look at my display settings on this laptop. So the display resolution is 1920 by 1080 recommended. So why, oh wait, the scale. Oh, the scale is 125%. Let's change the scale. Oh. Let's we change the scale back to 100%. So my system settings were messed up. Oh, hey, now everything is a smaller size. But that that explains a lot of why it wasn't working as I expected it to. Okay, so let's try this again. Hey, it works. I got it working, guys. It actually works. Now that I, I fixed the display settings on Windows 11, I can actually play. Yeah, and it, it's playing from the move log, but it, it is playing nonetheless. I got my SDL game actually working on Windows 11. And now the trick is I want to be able to do that again. Okay. Also, cat make file. Now there, it has a command to show what it looks like with a static, uh, the static lib. So let's try something. Let's go back to this directory, and it, it does run. It's 145 kilobytes, which is nice and everything. But let's try doing a static compile. Okay, we're gonna do make static okay now it com it compiles and it runs the same way it did that's actually cool yeah so i know it works correctly now i got it working Let's see here what the executable size is now. Hey, <laughs> notice how it's 15 megabytes. That's because it's including all of the libraries that SDL depend on. Now that's now the interesting thing is it boots up in less than a second. Yeah, that's actually really cool. Let's let's try going back to just a plain make. 
and then let's try running it. Yeah, this is super cool, you guys. It's it's blindingly fast either way. So apparently I was successful. I was actually successful in getting my game to compile correctly. That's actually really cool. Hmm. <clears throat> I could stop there, but why stop? Now that I've gotten one of my games to compile successfully, let's try it with the others. But before that, let's do something essential. I'm going to go to my GitHub. And let me go to my profile. We're going to go to my profile. We're going to go to Chase Tris. And then we're going to go to Source, SDL Render. And see, I had downloaded the original script that uses W64 Dev Kit. I, I have that in here. And I can still do that if I want to, if I install the right tools there. But I think I'm going to do something a little bit different this time. This time, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to upload the file that I just made, the, the script that I just made. So let's go back to this folder, and we have scoop sdl make dot bat. That's what we have there. And that should work. It's going to upload it, and I don't know why it takes me back to the root directory, but let's go back here. So now we have scoop SDL make. It's very simple. It sets the dev kit, and then it sets has flags for setting the, um, the include directory based on that because of the current directory, and then include SDL and the lib, and then it includes those flags to compile and run. It worked. I proved that it worked. So if it works for that, the odds are that it's also going to work for my other projects. So let's take, for example, instance. Let okay. We're gonna we're gonna try something. First of all, I'm gonna close out the terminal because the idea is that I should be able to compile and run the program without even having to enter the terminal. That's the beauty of a script. So let's run this script. Yep, I, run, I simply run the bad script. The game compiles and runs. It's flawless. It, it just works. SDL is amazing once you get it working. So now let's do scoop SDL Make let's let's see here. There's all of these different. Okay, copy. We're gonna copy. Uh, they replaced some things with icons. Now let's go back to the reason it's named zero SDL is because by putting the character zero, it ended up starting at the beginning. So it's kind of funny. And then we're going to we're going to paste. We're going to paste this, and then we're going to start running it here. Hey, there it is. We've got Chase Puyo. Now, this isn't full screen like the other one was. That's because Chase just was configured to be full screen, but the other projects, I just left them as they were. So here's Chase Puyo. Yeah, this is, this is super nice. You see how this works? I have my Puyo game working here. Yeah, that's actually really cool. Using the exact same script, because both of them use SDL, um, just kind of made it really cool. It, it, it works. Yeah, let's see if I can get this working. Okay, so see, once the yellow ones connect, then the red ones fall. See, yeah, I have a completely working Puyo game. That's actually cool. So one, now that it works for Chase Triss, it will work for Chase Puyo. So that's actually really cool. Okay, that works. So in other words, what this means is I did succeed.
I had to do a roundabout way to get this to work, but nonetheless, it does work. So, yes. So, I was successful. Even I installed Scoop. I installed, well, I tried to install SDL with Scoop, but that didn't work. So, then I had to install the SDL development files, the include files, and the um, in, and the library files into the compiler's directories so that they would automatically just be in the path with the so it detects the dll file it detects the linking libraries the include files they're all correct so i was able to just do a slightly modified version of my script that works with scoop and i don't have to actually modify the paths because scoop installed gcc but automatically updated my system path to include the bin directory where GCC was. So Scoop actually worked because even though I didn't know what I was doing, I was able to get it working. And that's a beautiful thing. So I can now compile my SDL games on Windows 11 just as well as I could on Linux. I will probably still do future development on Linux because it's easy. I'm used to it. But for the sake of making a video about it, it made more sense to record it on Windows 11 because I was setting up a Windows 11 development environment. So if I did make any changes to my games or I made any new games or other programs, I now have a way to compile and run them on Windows and distribute them to other people. Though I would have to include the DLL files unless I did a static compile. So yeah, but that's tech nerd stuff that not everybody would understand unless they've been an experienced C programmer. But Linux makes it easy. See, the point is on Linux, I didn't have to do any of that. I would install everything and it wouldn't, it would install the ones compatible with GCC. It wouldn't try to install the, the, you know, the Visual Studio development files. That's not what I wanted. So things still work better on Linux than they do Windows, but Scoop actually made it a little bit easier. So Scoop is sort of like a package manager similar to apt, but it runs some things on on Windows instead of Linux. And there's all kinds of scoop packages I haven't explored yet. And so if I want command line tools, I can install them through scoop, but I have all the ones I need for basic C programming. Anyway, this video is long enough, so I'm going to end it now, but at least I got it working. So thanks for watching.